This program is brought to you by UCKG. to another fabulous episode of A Different Kind of Women. We are different because we like to think outside of the box. And speaking of thinking outside of the box, on today's show, The Mumpreneur, we will be discussing the growing number of mums that are choosing to become their own boss while looking after their children at the same time. Almost 1.2 million mumpreneurs are now established in the UK and the numbers are growing fast. The number of self-employed women rose by 10% in the last two years, according to the Office for National Statistics. Now, what is behind the boom in startup mums? Let's take a look at what's coming up. Next, we're going to look at the reasons for the boom in mumpreneurs. At 4.15, find out what the people on the streets of London think with Jennifer Lon. At 4.25, see mumpreneur Shadia Deo in action, doing PR for the Global Shine Foundation. And later, she'll be joining us in the studio to discuss life as a mumpreneur. So joining me today is the full of vitality Verena. Hi. <laughs> the awesome Anne. Hello. And the magnificent Motti. Magnificent. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. <laughs> Hello, everyone. And today's show is, as we said earlier, the mumpreneur. Empowered by the internet and social media, which makes it possible to reach the masses and market one's services for nothing, and spurred on by a desire to contribute to the family coffers, enterprising stay-at-home mothers are launching many businesses from their kitchen tables. In some cases, the incentive is to help with the essentials. In others, it's for the extras, such as shoes or new curtains, that many now feel unable to ask their stressed-out husbands for. In both cases, it's a question of pride. This harks back to the days when our mothers and grandmothers dabbled in work light to earn their pin money and so to retain sorry, self-respect. Now, what do you think, ladies, is the reason why there are so many mumpreneurs popping up these days? <laughs> I just think it's so easy to make money nowadays, to be honest, mm -hmm. with the, uh, the internet, you know, and the whole, you know, spying and selling. Why not? Especially if you have to be at home, you might as well make use of your time. I, I think it's easier for, for mums to start off business from home rather than having to pay for childcare because mm -hmm. childcare is, is ever so expensive now. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one main reason why. Yeah, that's true. I think there are just uh, so many different reasons, but um, one that I can definitely maybe relate to, because obviously I'm a new mum. Yes. Um, <laughs> congratulations, Thank mommy. you. That wasn't actually, you know, corporate it's, congratulations, it's, but thanks anyway. No, 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 no. <laughs> but because it's, it's needed, he's such a cute boy. Oh, thank he you. <laughs> um, and actually, just from, you know, he's only three months, and just in these three months, just being around my baby, I already have ideas or things that I want I mm. would love to do mm -hmm. and actually I've got a notebook and I've written so many things down already that oh yeah I could do this and oh I could start this up so I think mothers also get inspiration from their children mm -hmm. and think oh yeah I could I could do this mm -hmm. because you know my child might like that and other children might feel the same so I think um, for some in some cases that's where it can come from mm. but I also can relate to the whole thing of not wanting to ask the stressed out father for money mm. and and having my own and I think that's for me, it's very liberating. Um, obviously, I started my own business before I became pregnant. Anyway, I had my own business. But now that I do, I am at home with my child, I do feel like I'm glad that I still have my own money coming in from mm. my business because yeah. I just, yeah. I feel like I don't want to put that extra pressure on my husband, you know, to be yeah. like... Yeah, oh, and especially you if you had a career that? before yeah. becoming a mom. If you've always been a working woman, had your own money, it's really difficult for you then to be at home and depending on your husband, yeah. for example, you want to buy the bag, yeah. the shoes, yeah. and you're not happy about or comfortable about asking him for money yeah. to buy 
and you know, what you would buy before without asking him. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think it's not only about money, right? I mean, you're, you're a mom, yes, and you have this human being that you bring up, but you're still an individual. And so I think people, and moms also still have their own personal dreams and they still have, you know, exactly. their own personal goals. And, and so being a mom does not necessarily mean that you stop becoming... That you've lost yourself. You've yeah. lost your identity. So that's a way of balancing mm. it out. That's a way of being there for your child mm. and still maintain your identity and your... Your, your financial independence. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's true. Um, and I also think that on, on a previous show, I had mentioned how... Um, Obviously, when I first had my baby and I was at home, I did kind of envy those mums who, are, who have just come, come from a job mm -hmm. because now they're on maternity leave. They don't think about their job at all. Whereas I still have to be doing my business and, you know, like coordinating. I'm not so much involved as I was uh, before, but I still coordinate a lot of things. And so, you know, whilst I'm there feeding him, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I've got to send that email and I've got to get back to that person. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Whereas yeah. they're free. However, in the long run, I do feel like, this setup is better for me because mm. I don't have I don't have that pressure of oh maternity leaves running out I've got to return back exactly. to work what yeah. am I going to do I don't want to leave my baby and yeah. I yeah. think sometimes that for some mums that is also the reason of wanting to yeah. start up something mm -hmm. that they can do whilst looking after their children yeah. so they, there isn't that pressure of having to go back yeah. into a job because mm -hmm. they are bringing in some sort of income exactly. and they can also look so it's kind of like the best I mean, of both worlds. It's quite dramatic for for the mom and also for the baby yeah. to actually break that bond because mm -hmm. that's how I looked at it when I had my kids yeah. and I had to return to work. I felt like I was breaking the bond yeah. from my child and having to leave my child with somebody else and to return to work, it's mm. awful. It's just yeah. an awful thing. Yeah. I mean, you get over it, the child gets over it, but then initially it's really difficult. Yeah. And, it, it, and also it's a privilege for you to be able to, I mean, it's a privilege in your right for you to be able to raise your child the way that you want to. Yeah. So when you, yeah. when you leave them to a carer, Although carers are good and I'm, I have nothing against them, mm. it, you're still leaving them to, to someone else to, to, to raise them mm -hmm. in a sense or yeah. to, to spend time with them yeah. while you're not there. And there's an influence there yeah. that, that's exactly. not yours exactly. and that you have no control over. Exactly. Yeah. So when yeah. you're there and you're, you're, you're raising, your, you're, you're close to your, your kid and your, your, your child is dependent only on you, then you can control how you influence your child and exactly. what you allow your child mm, to do. That's a very good point. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, there was an article actually that had mentioned that the term mumpreneur is quite patronising. Yeah. Um, and I think it's the whole thing of why does it have to be, you know, mum first yeah. and then entrepreneur sort of thing. Um, I'd like to find out your opinion. Do you think that that term is patronising? I, I had a lot of trouble with it. I was like, hello. <laughs> there, I mean, the, why, do you have to, why do you have to put the two things together? Because wh when you're in business, you're not functioning as a mom. So mm. while you're carrying out your business, whatever it is that you're carrying, when you're sending your email, you're not sitting there speaking about your, your boy. Oh, I've just fed my baby and he's like the cutest. You're dealing with business. So it is, uh, it is separate from you being a mom. Mm -hmm. you, it, it, and I think putting them together is kind of uh, making it even harder for women to kind of stare, out, stare clear of this stigma that, you know, as, as women, as mothers, we cannot have successful mm -hmm. careers. So I think it contributes to that yeah, stereotype. I don't know. Yeah. Would I care about the term? I, like I, I, I care. I care. I care. I care. No, do you know what? I think. She's a business woman. She's an entrepreneur. She is. She but is. she's but also, do you know what? I think we all love a good story. We all love to hear about people that made it despite the difficulties. Yeah. And the fact is, if you are a mum, a new mum, it's easier than a person that is single. Mm. So it's, it's not saying, oh, it's a negative or she's a mother first. What mm. it's saying is that not only is she an entrepreneur, but she's also a mother. Yeah. It's like when you hear the story of a five-year-old kid that became a millionaire selling ice cream. Well, there's ice cream already, yeah. but it's the fact that the kid is five that makes so, it so even then, more interesting. So then, so then, so then we should have kid in here. We should have uh, whatever, knew. all these things. I actually knew that Isn't Martin it? was going to say that. Isn't it? Yeah. Because, yeah. because you consider them an entrepreneur who is a kid, yeah. right? So you don't put that in a title. You don't title them, you know, kid yeah. in here or whatever. But you don't live they do always, to be will always kid. if they were in a talk show, or whatever, they will mention it. That's yeah. what is, I mean, it's not like it's a tick box so, mumpreneur. They will always be known as an umpreneur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I like it. Well, think it's patronizing. Nice. I, I, think, think, I, think, I think it's nice. I think it, it, it does speak volumes to women mm. who are moms and starting up their own businesses and, and, and telling other moms that, 
you know, hey, you know, you while you're at home, you can you can actually be making money. There's no reason why you can't be at home looking after your baby and making money. So I think... Yeah, I mean, I, I sorry not to cut you, but I actually kind of agree with that because when I think of the term mumpreneur, I do think of women who have managed to start up something whilst, you know, being on maternity leave or being at home, staying mm. with their children. And mm. they might not have become an entrepreneur if they weren't in that setting. Exactly. So that's what I you, kind of you, think. You, you feel forced. Yeah, but even, yeah. even so... Like I said, I, I, I had already started up my business before I had a baby, but then I'd love to be called a mumpreneur. Yeah. I think it's a lovely, because it just feels like... I mean, I'm alone here, but really? I start <laughs> to my own No, no, no. Opinion. I know what you mean. mean. I feel like you mean. I, do, I, I, I completely understand what you mean, but I'm just thinking of it Thank from you. a personal <laughs> point of view. Thinking of it from a personal point of view, being yeah. a mum is a really it's really a full-time job mm. for true. Like, they, they didn't lie about that when, yeah. when they said that. It's a full-time <laughs> job so it, it is kind of almost praiseworthy if you, you yes. know and, and also and, and, yeah. and inspiring if you can yeah. be that mum who has started up something uh, yeah. and is yeah. making money and that's is doing it yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's and, and, and even I completely agree with I mean I was raised by a single mom so I value what my mom did and I value what she had to go through in order to be able to reconcile raising me and still you know afford raising me but I just think, I don't know, I, I'm coming from, maybe because I'm not a mom, so uh, I'm just coming from a business set, kind of like, a, a, my mind is set on this business side of things mm -hmm. and, and the, the, the importance that, we, that we're trying to achieve as women in business. And so having that title, I think it sets us back because although your stories, I, I do agree, I, I understand your stories, but it kind of takes, for me, it takes away from the seriousness of what you do, just because people are, you know, are just going to associate you as doing that kind of business because you're a mom, kind of. Yeah. I don't, I, I, I'm not expressing myself properly, but I just think when people title you mompreneur, so you're, you're talking, you're talking to someone and that you're being introduced as mompreneur, um, uh, <laughs> Melissa, it just, for me, it takes away from your seriousness in that field of business. I, well, I hear no, you, Monty, for me, I it shows, you. it shows, I hear what you're saying, but for me, it shows that I can be really flexible and be good at it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. You know, I am actually doing two jobs and somebody else is actually doing one. Well, I have to I agree see. with that. And before we can give Motti a chance to come back, <laughs> we're, going to go. <laughs> we're going to go for a short break. But before we do, let's hear from Jennifer Lon about what the people on the streets of London think. Why do you think so many women set up their own businesses after having had children? Because it's much easier if you're at home and you start a business at home, it's, it's so much easier to be at home and be able to do everything at the same time. Yes, because it's easier to do one thing after another and it's easier to start uh, an own business than to get back in your old job. Probably because it's easier to manage your own, own time, you can be your own boss, set your own hours a bit more. Like it's a lot of work, but you can do the work when it suits or, you know, during the school hours and that kind of thing. Because it's really difficult to, to continue with your career when you want to, to be mother and because it's difficult to do all the stuff, all the things you have to do at, at a house with the children and also arrive from work at uh, five or six or even late. They feel more confident in themselves because they've established something in life, I suppose, yeah. How difficult is it to have a successful career and still spend quality time with children? You know, you're running in the morning, getting breakfast, getting everything ready for the kid. Some kids can be more independent than others, but, um, you know, sometimes you have to, you really have to be there. And then you just rush to work. <laughs> and after that, you come home around five, six, get dinner ready, get laundry done, get all the house in shape. So it's a little bit, you know, stressful if you have a full-time job. I think it's really very difficult because um, anyway, you're spending time with your children or with your career and you're always thinking, oh, I should do the other side. <laughs> um, I want to be a doctor and I haven't even started my medical degree yet and I'm already weighing up at what point I can have kids and at what point I can specialise. So, very tricky. <laughs> 
I think it's difficult, especially in my country, in Spain, because uh, we don't have a lot of possibilities uh, to be held by companies if we want to have like not uh, not complete the uh, terms of works. So we have to decide. Uh, I think uh, it's about cultural aspects um, and biological too. Uh, but I'm positive about it because I think something is changing in the world, so I'm positive about it. This program is brought to you by UCKG. Did you know that around 450 million people worldwide have some sort of mental health issue? Well, I used to be one of those statistics because I was depressed for many years, but not anymore. And now it's my turn to help you lead a happier and healthier life. Monday, Wednesday and Friday, Chrissy B Show. Virtual Expanses the internet, more and more possibilities and technological innovations. Saturday, shift. export. This program is brought to you by UCKG. Welcome back everyone and today's show topic is the mumpreneur. Now before the break we were discussing the reasons for the boom in mothers and startup businesses. So ladies, I'd like to ask you, do you like the idea of being at home and starting up your business as a, a mom and becoming successful? How does that sound to you? I, I, I'm going to answer that first. I'm not a mom. I'm not a mom. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just love the idea. I love the idea because I'm going to speak from a daughter's uh, perspective, right? Um, with my mom, she wasn't a mompreneur, so she wasn't at home all the time. And I am, and the times that I did have her at home reassured me so much that if if she was a full time mom or well, she was full time at home, you know, she was a mompreneur. <laughs> that title still gives me <laughs> still gives me chills. But yeah, if she was a stay at home mom and still and ran her business from home, it would have been so much easier because because having sometimes having her come back from a stressful. Um, day at work from a day that I, I wasn't part of that day so I, I didn't kind of witness the things that caused her stress and then all of a sudden I'm here having a conversation and that stress is that is overflowing into our uh, our interaction I can tell even right. though my mom was very controlled but I could tell that uh oh something is wrong whereas if we were together I might have witnessed that phone call that mm. you know made her stressed out and so I would have would stayed understand. here I yeah. would understand I would, it would be something that I was also involved in and it, I think it just makes it easier when when the mm -hmm. when people when people spend time together, so yeah. mom and mom and, and child would benefit from from spending the time together. So if if women could do that, I would s Ooh. surely um, approve. I'd yeah. like to hear from you. <laughs> I'm, I'm making faces, like, mm. aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> the career woman is that I'm not no. giving up my career. It's not even that. It's not even that. It's because I've been on. Um, I have my own business, um, as you know, mm -hmm. and I have a career. I don't have a child, but if I, I know what it's like to have a business, it's so stressful, mm -hmm. so stressful. 
and what you're like at home, especially in the beginning of a business, it's not about, okay, clients, wonderful, drop the phone, oh, feed baby. It's stressful. Yeah, you obviously know better than me. I may be completely wrong, but my hair, I was losing hair at the start of my business because it's hard, you've got clients, you've got demands. So do I want my baby to witness that? I don't know. I actually like the fact, of the thought of being able to step away, going to work and then leave my work behind. I'm an events manager. So if, for example, I finish today's work, I leave it and I go home and now it's time for family. Whereas when you have your own business, there's no switch off, clock off. There's no, it's continuous. So I love the idea. I think it depends on the business but, and stress but, levels. But uh, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, okay, I, have, person. I haven't set up a, an own business. You, you are, you're speaking from an experience, but couldn't couldn't that be discipline that you put into your day to know? Well, I will work from from this time until this time, and then after that, I switch off. It, you, it can possibly potentially be that way, but sometimes theoretically, there are things that, it theoretically, work. <laughs> I think the, the idea sounds lovely and wonderful, but I, I do agree with Anne that it just takes a lot of work, and I think that. Sometimes it is possible to do that, especially when, when you've been running it maybe for a little while and you know how things can go and you yeah. can delegate. But there are some things that just need dealing with right right now and you're stressed. Like you might be breastfeeding your baby and you're just stressed out and the baby can, can tell when you're stressed out. Mm -hmm. And then that just makes everything more stressful mm -hmm. um, because you've got this pressing issue and you need to actually deal with it right now. So it's kind of like, I need you to hurry up and get off so I can do this. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it, can be, it can be like that. So I think I, it sounds really ideal, but um, Anne rightly said to start up your own business is very difficult and it takes a lot of work and a lot of commitment mm -hmm. and a lot more hours than, it, than your normal nine to five job, mm -hmm. to be honest yeah. with you. And, and sometimes there is no switch off. Sometimes in the middle of the night, you're there thinking about ideas of how to make it work. How do I actually make money and, you mm -hmm. know, make this more of a business than rather than just a name, mm -hmm. you know, and it can, it can really take a lot out of you. So you'd have to be really committed um, but then if you've got the children, it, it can be a very, very stressful time for both. So I guess it kind of depends on, on the, the, I guess, the level of the kind of business yeah. that you want to do. Because, yeah. again, as we said earlier, some, some are just doing small things just to earn a exactly. little bit of yeah. it. I, I was about to say. And not trying to be millionaires exactly. from their kitchen table. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, I was depends. about to say, you know, if, if, if you've got young kids and you want to start something small from home, then then it's fine. I think it's actually better for you as a mom to stay at home with your kids and, and make a little bit of money on the side. Because I remember when I had my kids, um, it was a very stressful time for me because I, I was studying at one point, working full time, trying to raise my kids. And I always wanted to open my own business, but I just couldn't do it because my kids were young and I couldn't see myself staying at home, couldn't see myself taking the risk of not having a steady income yeah. coming in. You know, and I had to wait until my kids were adults mm -hmm. in order for me to start my own business, which I have now. You know, but yes, it is very stressful, mm -hmm. you know. But give me, give me the, uh, if I had the choice, I would rather stay at home with my children and start my own business from yeah. home. But, and, in, but in the same light, I, aren't most careers stressful nowadays? I mean, although, although you say you, you can switch off when you go home, you don't have to deal with it, but you still carry your job. It's still, you still carry yeah, your job. Yeah, you know, but you know, I actually do both now, and I can tell you this. I run my business over the weekends from home, and then I work full-time during the week. But then my paid job, as soon as I clock off at four, it's, it's out the window. Mm. It's behind me. I don't want to remember anything about my job. I can testify to that. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah it's true. <laughs> I don't want to talk about my job. I don't want to think about it. But my business is different. Mm. You know, it's your, your baby. It's your baby. Mm. You it it's your grow. own thing. Yeah. It's your own thing. Yeah, you definitely. Know? Yeah. And sometimes also the, the, what you're doing as a business can come from maybe something that you enjoy or that yeah. you, you find relaxing. Like yeah. I've seen a colleague of mine who has now set up her own Facebook page for things that she's um, knitting. Mm -hmm. And she's obviously been doing that maybe for her baby. And it, she just thought, you know, I'm doing this so well, let me try and sell some. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. All right, well, here are some tips for, for, from successful mumpreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, number one, find a gap in the market. If you really want to work for yourself, um, you can get inspiration for a business idea from just about anywhere. Anything, yeah. um, there are so many mumpreneurs now, and it's because we started wanting better products, says Leanne Curtis Cobb, founder of Quack Quack Moo. Um, I'm not actually sure what that business is, but <laughs> mums are starting to design products and <laughs> solutions when they face problems. That's so true. Um, I've, I've, I was just saying that earlier. Sometimes it can come from wanting to kind of 
you know, find a solution for something or make something better. Mm -hmm. and you start up your own thing. Um, play to your strengths. Um, Michelle Dan Danielis, mm -hmm. uh, founder of uh, Benjoy Nutrition. Um, if you haven't had that eureka moment of inspiration for something completely new, all you need to do is look at your skills, expertise and strengths and see how they might be applied to something. Um, she suggests running a franchise. That mm -hmm. can, that can, yeah. that's a, quite yeah. good, because then that's a business that already exists. Yeah. Yeah. True. Um, yeah, there are lots of websites um, that let you tap into existing businesses that you can then run for yourself from home. Budget for your expenses. I think that's really important because obviously you don't want to start up something that's going to be, yeah. <laughs> that's going to have a lot of yeah. overheads and just, be more stressful than it would be to maybe just not do anything at all. Exactly. Oh, yeah, exactly. Be realistic exactly. with your dreams and, and, and what you're going to come small. out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, start small. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. The naming game. Um, obviously, choosing the right name. You know what? That's so I important. important. I, 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 I picked up a box of uh, eggs yesterday only because it was named Posh Eggs. And I was like, who that. would want posh eggs? And you're like, I, I deserve posh, posh eggs. eggs. Yeah. And then well, when I looked, it was, it, there were dark eggs. And I was like, no, no dark eggs. I want <laughs> chicken <laughs> eggs. But just the name. So well, name according, can... according to Morty, no matter what you do, do not name your business Mom Panu. <laughs> yeah, no. Exactly. no, 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 no. No, don't. <laughs> um, and also marketing. I think this is a big one. If you're going to start up your business... I, I, I've actually seen a lot of people who have started up something and they've got great products, but then they're afraid to market themselves. Mm. Like the self-confidence isn't there. Yeah. And I think you have to, if you want to make money, you're going to mm. have to be able to market yourself and it's not true. be afraid to put mm. yourself out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think it's easier to do that for something mm. that already exists yeah. or if you're representing somebody else. Um, and sometimes for yourself, there is that kind of, oh, yeah. and insecurity. And sometimes it's, it's because you know you're not ready for the influx. Because that <laughs> happened to me at the beginning of my business. Because I felt I didn't feel ready yeah. to mm -hmm. receive tons of orders. So uh, with my marketing, I was a little bit stagnant in the beginning. Do you remember, Mel? Yes, I remember. So I think it's because sometimes you feel, oh, am I ready to take on a huge order? Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. And yeah. sometimes there's a bit of fear of rejection as well. It's like you don't yeah. want the criticism of people to say, oh, well, this could be a bit better or this could mm. be. So it's a, it's a load of different yeah. things. Sure. Yeah. Um, OK, well, we're going to take a short break now. Um, but before we do, our team went to see mumpreneur Shadia Deo in action at the Global Shine Foundation charity auction. So one of the core philosophies of um, Roundtable Global is to create an organisation that's focused on creating balance in the world. So um, we're looking to empower women, we're looking to re-educate children, we're also looking to find our balanced place in the ecosystem as humans. Um, and what we found is Roundtable Global is a for-profit organisation and obviously that's quite exclusive so there's lots of women out there, there's entrepreneurs, um, there's amazing women who want to set up initiatives and they can't afford to and they don't have the support, the funding, the coaching, anything really that they need to be able to do this. And so we created the foundation in recognition of that and also to be able to offer them support and coaching and everything that anybody else can get really. I do business and PR management and when I was um, contacted by Tiffany um, and she elaborated on what the cause was, um, both um, concepts of, you know, of tonight's um, charity fundraising is to do with the Global Shine Foundation which empowers um, women into business and then there's the other aspect of um, kids you know, being very positive you know, for the future and um, I offered my services in PR. The auction is about raising money so that we can run programs um, for women around the world, but it's also so that we can offer seed funding for entrepreneurial schemes that have been set up. Um, and I suppose also it's about bringing together individuals who are passionate about making change happen, um, bringing together people who really want to inspire change, and showing them that we can have a solution-driven mindset and make change happen, and not just sit back and talk about all of the things that are happening in the world um, around the suppression of women and the disempowerment of women that are negative. This evening we hope to raise a lovely sum of money so that we can help take the work that we're doing um, with the SHINE programme into communities and to groups of women who can't necessarily afford it. Swarovski have very kindly donated all the crystals for this piece, which is the first time I've ever done anything on this scale, which is very exciting. And I 
Um, I'm hoping that this will raise some funds for the foundation. £1,000, please, Victor. There's a reserve, obviously, on this. It's a great deal more than this, I can assure you. What inspired me about this painting is looking at these beautiful faces that are sad, tears in their eyes. They don't have a chance unless we all put our hands together and do something and give them a chance to really, you know, advance in life and become successful and show whatever they're, they're capable of doing. I'm part of a collective called Meet the Vloggers. Uh, we're a family, we're a YouTube family, um, and we vlog and we blog. Um, our demographics are very, very broad. They range from I know, 60 down to five years old, and we all do very different things. Um, with the British Model Kids, um, what we do is we inspire children. We, um, we operate catwalk school, which um, raises their confidence, self-esteem, and we do it all in a really fun, nice way. You know, training them how to do catwalk, both shoot techniques, how to look after themselves, diet and nutrition, um, and you know, gives them an opportunity and the experience if they want to maybe get into that when they're older, they can do. Um, but it's a nice, fun way, light-hearted way of doing it. With the whole blogging and vlogging thing, obviously we know that bloggers are forever taking pictures, which we, uh, most of us all like to do right now with the selfies and stuff. Um, so yeah, it just literally, it's just all incorporated in once, you know, they're taking pictures, they're blogging at the same time, they're learning how to do lots of different things about lots of different subjects and, you know, it keeps things interesting in life. This programme is brought to you by UCKG. Did you know that around 450 million people worldwide have some sort of mental health issue? Well, I used to be one of those statistics because I was depressed for many years, but not anymore. And now it's my turn to help you lead a happier and healthier life. Monday, Wednesday and Friday, Chrissy B Show. The best top 10 of the week. From the start to the finish, famous artists, surprising videos and the best songs. Which are going to be this week's greatest hits. Sunday, my top 10. <laughs> Creative. Yep. Ball. 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 Inspiring. <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> Lifestyle Europe. Monday to Friday, Euromax. This program is brought to you by UCKG. Welcome back and on today's show, The Mumpreneur, we've been discussing what it takes to become a mumpreneur. Joining us in the studio is PR and child model agency director, Shadia Deo. Hi Shadia, hey, lovely hey, to have you guys. Here. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you. you. Well, I'd like to ask you, how did having children inspire your career? Um, well, I've got two children. Uh, when um, I was first pregnant, obviously, you know, you've got a lot of free time on your hands. You know, you're at home looking after you. Um, I was actually working at an accountancy. Very boring job. Um, but for me, it was just, uh, you know, you're going through the trials and tribulations of being pregnant, you know, morning sickness and what have you. So I thought, you know what, I've been working for so many years. Let me just take some time out for me. And it was just time for me to self-reflect and say to myself, you know, 
you know, I've, I'm going into the next stage of my life. I'm having kids. Um, and for me, I, what I wanted to do was have kids quite close together. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're feeding one, you may as well feed two, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so for me, I, you know, in that space of time, I said, okay, what shall I do? So I started doing loads of different courses, mm -hmm. um, like web design, um, graphics, that type of stuff. And it was... It, in my head, it wasn't really, it wasn't towards a goal that I, kn I knew at that point, but it was something that I enjoyed doing and it was developing my skills. And then when I had my second child, obviously I'm at home completely now. Mm -hmm. And I just said to myself, you know, I'm going to try and kill two birds at once, well, three birds with one stone <laughs> yeah. here and do something that I love. And, you know, when you've got kids, it's a learning curve in itself. Mm -hmm. You know, you're learning things, as you said, about women that, um, are new mothers, you know, they're, they're trying to think, oh, how do I do this? And then they develop an idea and, yes, you know, yeah. turn it into a business, which is fantastic, you know. And, you know, women, I mean, I think many women that have kids develop that entrepreneurism spirit in that process. Um, so with the kids, you know, they, they inspired me because, I mean, as you know, Arabella's been on the show before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they inspired me because they were, they were, they were, I had to generate my life, my lifestyle around the idea that I had kids. And it was, how can I nurture their skills, their talents into something that I want to do? And it was just, that, that was the start of it, really. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was sharing earlier on about how I was raised by a single mom and you're also a Absolutely. single mom. Yeah? yeah. And and we were kind of so, sort of having a different sets of opinion here. I thought it would be great to have my mom at home and run her business at home and me be part of it. But um, some, some were mentioning that it may be stressful and not having you know the, the choice to switch off from work, come home and just dedicate yourself to your children at home. Balancing the two may be stressful. How do you balance your career and being a mom? Um, well, it's with with the work that I do, yeah, you know, um, my work's very creative. You know, mm -hmm. where I'm part of the YouTube collective, meet the bloggers. You know, the, the the kids are bloggers and bloggers themselves. So everything that I do sort of rotates around them. I'm just quite fortunate to have found um, a mishmash of skills and talents yeah. and people mm -hmm. that I'm working with. I mean, generally, if you've got a business, like you said, you're in events, so you're you you have to go out and work with lots of different people mm -hmm. to, in order to you know um, end up getting the result that you need but with me because I'm working with my family and my kids are doing mm -hmm. it and I'm sort of managing them directly mm -hmm. it's all it's all rotated around our lifestyle um how do you manage it you just have to be very strong um, I wouldn't even say organized you I think you just got to be creative and just open-minded in what you do mm -hmm. I think if you can see the bigger picture um, and not put any barriers up to say, oh God, okay, this is how I've got to do it. Nothing's set in stone. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have kids, it's growing them, nothing's set in stone. It's a learning process and you teach yourself and you teach your kids how to respond to that situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then do you think that any mother can be, um, can start their own business? Absolutely. What, what advice would you give to those that say, right, this is for me? Um, I, okay, so for me... Um, when I was younger, I, I wanted to be, I wanted to sing, and I wanted to be Mariah Carey in Wembley Stadium, and I'm still working on it. I'm still working yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, when, while the kids were growing up, you know, you spot skills and you spot talents, and um, the talents that I saw, some of them were creative, some of them were physical, sporty, you know, mm. um, entertainment, value, and all the rest of it, and it's just nurturing what you have. Mm. So when you are a mum and you want to start a business, you've got to think about, how best can I, because your kids are first, obviously. Mm -hmm. Well, you're number one, your kids are number two, because if you don't look after number one, you can't look after it's number two. two. Mm -hmm. So yeah. number three is your business if you want to have one. So you've got to think, how best can I integrate, like number two get integrated into you, how best can I integrate number three into this situation? Yeah. And great if you do something that's orientated around kids because you can actually bring your kids yeah. into it. Mm -hmm. But if you, you, you can't do that, then it's all about finding that process. I think you've just got to be very motivated and, and passionate about what you do and mm -hmm. strive for that achievement. Um, and like I said, the bar barriers is a big thing, you mm -hmm. know, especially with a lot of people. But social media, the way our world is today, things are very open and a lot more easier to access. Mm -hmm. So I think taking all these elements and bringing them together, it just makes for um, an easier process. Mm -hmm. Now, would you say, um, because you came from a career, so you had this 
kind of you were career minded, so it was easy for you to to start off your own business from home, um, having that mindset. But what would you say to women who perhaps um, before becoming a mom did not have that career mindset, but then now they are at home and wanting to start off their own business. What tips would you give them? How would you tell them to go about starting up? And okay, I get um, I get a lot of emails mm -hmm. um, and you know over the social media as well and you know over the website and stuff. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of emails from women saying you know. I've, you know, thank you. I really mm -hmm. inspire them, motivate them, which is great. And you know, if we can't be role models to women out there, then mm -hmm. what can we be? Mm -hmm. um, but I think any anything is achievable. Mm -hmm. uh, any, anything you put your mind to, and I come back to the Wembley Stadium thing with being the singer. <laughs> anything's achievable. Um, and I think just find something that you want to do. Look towards yourself and say, you know what, I'm good at this. When I sit down with um, my clients and I say to them what do you want to do mm -hmm. what I mean what are you doing at the moment oh I'm, I'm a PA or I'm working in accounts or I'm working in a hotel or whatever and but what is it that you want to do you've got this pot of money and you want to start a business what do you like to do and some of them go oh, I don't know I'm like well can you draw mm -hmm. do you like sport do you like kids? Do you like, you know, do you like designing? And some of them come out and they go, oh, do you know, I really like drawing and I like designing clothes. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, maybe that's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Release your creativity, release mm -hmm. that talent mm -hmm. and nurture it yourself mm -hmm. because when you wake up in the morning, half the struggle is actually getting up. Mm -hmm. And like you said, when you go to work and you leave that job, your pay job, mm -hmm. um, you're, you're sorry, your nine to five, mm -hmm. you just forget about mm -hmm. it because it's not something you're passionate mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. However, when you go to work on the weekend and you're doing what you mm -hmm. want to do, mm -hmm. you're getting up mm -hmm. um, and you're, you're, yeah, you're doing what you want to do and you will progress that and you're passionate about it. And I think finding that element in yourself and releasing it is very, very important. Mm. Do you think that that helps to minimize the stress within that job? Because everybody was mentioning how stressful it is uh, starting your own business. Um, is being passionate about what you do a key thing to minimize that stress. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got the, brain, the way the brain processes things, you know, you've got a million things coming at you um, internally and externally. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a restrictor up saying, God, I can't do that. Oh, God, I've got to do this. I've got to do that deadline. I've got to do this. But, you know, when you are in your own business, you are generally working on your own stress levels, your own. Um, pace and your own deadlines like you know when you do events you have a deadline you've got to meet it however your body will um, unconsciously just organize itself mm -hmm. yeah it does get stressful and you know yeah you can be there looking after the kids one minute answering the phone trying to be normal but really you're just like oh my god what the hell's going on <laughs> yeah. you know it's it's not everything's not as easy as that but I think doing something that you're passionate about and that you want to do mm -hmm. um, and releasing that creative energy within you is is helpful mm -hmm. would, you, would yeah. you say there's a sorry Don't. would you say there's a good time to start your business as a young mom um let's see I, I mean I I started when I was about 24. It was, it was actually when that, that was the bit. The kids inspired me so much because I wanted to create a better future for them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and how old were they at the time? Uh, so I, I was... I was pregnant with Arabella when I was 24. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. and, that, so, and then she, um, my son and her, there's a years between them. Mm -hmm. um, and they really helped me understand what I wanted to do. You know, like I said, I wanted to sing. So I was looking at them saying, what are they good at? Let me nurture that from now. Because mm -hmm. if I nurture it from now, mm -hmm. they don't have to get to... 14, 15, 16, when school tells them to do mm -hmm. that, and then say, oh, well, you know, actually, I'm really good at artistry, mm -hmm. let me go and do it. Mm -hmm. If they learn that from now, it's an easier process, and yeah. they become professional experts at it mm -hmm. from a young age, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, so you're proving that it is possible for you to become a, uh, an entrepreneur, a mompreneur at an early age. And speaking of mompreneur, we had an argument that I would like okay. to bring you in. <laughs> okay. I would like to bring you in. She's not letting go. Oh, she's not letting go. Okay, give it to me. We're talking about this term mompreneur. We, we had separate opinions, but what do you think of the term mompreneur? Is it a patronizing term? Is it something that you would be proud of? I personally, th I mean, I find it quite um, uh, motivating. Mm -hmm. um, I know, you know, obviously we have entrepreneur, which is a generalization of, mm -hmm. you know, entrepreneurs yeah. and what they do, you yeah. know, people in this day and age. I mean, you know, an entrepreneur could be 
a woman or a, a man. Yeah. But I mean, even if you think about kids, I mean, my, my daughter's an entrepreneur at her at yeah. a very young age. She's 12 years old. Love she's, Arabella. <laughs> <laughs> she's doing some great things and she's got a lot of great things to come. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I think, I think women have actually been in the shadow a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you think about the Kardashians, for instance, mm -hmm. the mum, the mum is the driving force behind mm -hmm. them. She has literally saw something from let's say 10 years back, 15 years back, mm -hmm. and thought, okay, let me try and just get it to a stage where the kids yeah. can do something. Mm -hmm. But then you, we've just recently found out that it's actually her behind the driver, she was in the driving seat. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if a woman's in the shadow all them years, and just now has it taken society to say, oh, okay, you know, mm -hmm. actually it was a woman, not a man, mm -hmm. to do that, mm -hmm. is a great thing. So I think we really need to just embrace mm -hmm. things like that. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, we're all women at the end of the day, and, you know, mm -hmm. we, it's been a long process to get mm -hmm. us yeah. to the stage that we're at. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. 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 I've officially on, lost the yes. argument. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you are right, Mom. We are, we are. <laughs> Can I just ask you... Okay. Sorry. It's Can right. I just ask you a question yes. about switch off? Because okay. obviously before being a mother, yeah. you're a person, you're, you're an individual. Mm -hmm. If you have, um, you've sort of combined your being a mother with working, where do you get to be just you, or step away from being a mum and just, you know, because obviously not being in the workplace where yeah. you're away from the children. When do you get, or how do you get to feed that time in? Um, my, I'm very lucky because my work is generated. I, I've made my business, like I said, one, two and three mm -hmm. into my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my work is generated about the things that I do business stuff, personal stuff, you know, health and whatever, recreational stuff. It's all, it's all part of the meshed same process. Mm -hmm. It's all meshed together. So mm -hmm. for me, like I said, I'm very fortunate to have mm. created that mould, but we can mm. all create that mould. Mm, yeah. You just have to just sit back and reflect and say, OK, I've got this and I've got this. Let's see how we can bring it together and make my life easier. I mean, mm. I spend a lot of time with my kids. Even when they came on the show, I was mm -hmm. there. You yeah. know, when they're out doing whatever they're doing, I'm always there. Mm. So we're very, very close and with the family as well. You know, when, when they're out blogging or vlogging or doing whatever they're doing, we go as a family collective. Mm. Um, um, which grows the bond because yeah. you know mm. that yeah. they are they are your workmates they mm. are your colleagues yeah. they are you you know you're all bosses and you're all mm. you know appren apprentices and PAs yeah. and all the rest of it mm. it's just a family effort which is a very beautiful mm. thing mm. and I, I, I go back to the whole being you know single mum and things like that um, you know ideally back in the day you know I mean and still ideally it's great to have you know the mum and dad and and everybody in that family unit but you know, women are great multitaskers. We know this, we are, yeah? yeah. You know, and we, we put up with mm. a hell of a lot. Mm. And, Definitely. you know, I mean, my, my kids, bless them, they're just like, well, mom, you know, like, you are my mom and you are my dad, so I'm all right, oh, you know? Yeah, yeah, bless yeah, them. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, it's one of them yeah, things. But, you know, true. I think building that family energy together and moulding it is very, very important. Definitely. Mm, definitely. I think we could talk about this all day. <laughs> yeah. true. But unfortunately, we have to go for a break. Thank you so much. Thank you it's so been great much. Thank you. You're all you. wonderful Thank ladies. You Thank you very much. Uh, we are going to go to... Hello to Arabella. Absolutely. We are going to go to a break now, but stay tuned as we'll be back with more on the topic of the mumpreneur. This program is brought to you by UCKG. Good evening and welcome to tonight's Finding Answers. Good evening, welcome to Finding Answers. Hi, I'm Chika here on the streets of London for Finding Answers. So Phyllis, welcome to the programme. Thanks for having me. How did you feel? To be honest with you, I feel, you know, bad. I feel bad because I knew what I was doing was not right. We'd love to, to hear from you. We'd love to help you. The best top 10 of the week. From the start to the finish, famous artists, surprising videos and the best songs. Which are going to be this week's greatest hits. Sunday, my top 10. This programme is brought to you by UCKG. Welcome back, and on today's show, we've been discussing uh, what it takes to become a mumpreneur. Um, and I'd like to actually ask you, ladies, do you think it's true that all women can become mumpreneurs or can be mumpreneurs? I personally don't think so. 
I don't think it's for all women, simply because you're a mom and you're at home and you can't, you need to make extra money because you, you can't go out to work. It doesn't mean that you can't start up, start up your own business. You have to have the right mentality, mm. the right state of mind. You know, the ability, you have to have the skills. It, it does take some level of skills I, for you to be able to do that. Mm. I, think, I think everyone can, but not necessarily that they're ready, that everyone is ready to. So meaning, for example, if I get myself to a point where I'm ready, I can. You see mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Because you have some moms who, 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 as Verena is saying, are not ready because they don't have the skills yet. They don't have a firm idea. But if they get themselves to a point where they, you know, they take time and they reflect and they look at their lifestyle and they look at what they're passionate about and they kind of explore that. And yes, they can get themselves mm -hmm. to a point where they, they are able yeah. to. Yeah. So do you think then that everybody in this world can run their own business? No. Do you think everyone's a business I, I person? I don't believe that. I don't believe everybody can run their own business. Otherwise, we all would be. Yeah, but, so then why would you think then that every mum no, could think, be a, a, a mumpreneur? I think if, because if you think, I mean, we, we, we're talking about people who, who have made the choice to work, right? We're, we're excluding the group that have made a choice not to be involved in a career or not, not, to, be, not to work at all. So we're not bringing them into the equation. But when you think about it, everyone who's working um, is doing something. So when you're going to a job, you are bringing in, in, within that job a skill set. Mm -hmm. And so that skill set can become a business. Like you can do something. I just, I think people are intimidated by the thought. I, I think people um, don't, don't, maybe don't want the responsibility. They don't want to take that responsibility and that risk necessarily, but they can, they have the ability because you, nobody's going to work and, and not, have, not have something to contribute within that job. Mm -hmm. I, I, I believe, I, I don't agree because I believe to, to start up your own business and to run your own business, you have to have the right mentality. It's something that you have to have within you. You have to have that independence about you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And for you to be able to do it because you, you, you've got your own business and you know how difficult it is yeah. to start and to sustain a business. And it's not for everybody. You know, mm -hmm. our last guest here, when she was talking, I was really motivated by how she was presenting herself and, you know, because she has all the skill sets that, that will enable her to, to start that business, carry on, and to be successful. Not everybody can carry that off. It's true. Yeah. And when you think about what comes, I mean, I agree that everyone can be, but should be, I don't know. Because even if, you, if it's the most simplistic ideas, for example, you're good at knitting, like the idea you gave, and you, you're, you've been at it for a month, and in one month you haven't sold one woolly hat, that can be demotivating. Yeah. And if you're not the type of person that can deal with that, how are you going to be around your child? Is that going to make you feel, oh, you're right, I'm not good at anything, yeah. you know, all because of this kid. Okay, it's a bit of an extreme example, mm -hmm. but it's not just about finding something that you can do and doing it, but it's what comes with being a business person, which essentially is what you are. I, yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think it's a question of mindset because, uh, uh, I don't know, I, uh, maybe I am looking at life in a simplistic way because all of that can happen in a career as well. Like, for example, you have a project that your manager has given you. You didn't rise up to that project. You failed and, you know, you disappointed someone. You still have to pick yourself up from, but, from but there. But that's the thing, though. Some people will not pick themselves up. You know, I, I, I have been a, a manager in the workplace and I've had some people that I will never employ again mm -hmm. because simply because they're not good employees. Mm -hmm. And it's not because of, it's their fault. It's just that this is who they are. Yeah. I, I definitely think this is... Oh, clearly very debatable because it definitely takes more than being a mum to become a mumpreneur. Yeah. Um, and personally, when I think about myself, I have never been that great of an employee. I, I think I was always meant to have my own business because I just could not stay in a job. Mm -hmm. So while I could do the job, I couldn't, I didn't give it as much as I, you know, I, I don't think I've ever given any job as much as I probably could have. Um, just because that, that was not, I, I felt like within me there was something more mm. that I needed to, something different. And I, and I think because I was trying to find that, I, had, I did lots of different jobs because I was trying to find what, until I started up my own creative business it's, and it's like, yeah. I've just never looked back. Yeah. So while I think that, I do understand that there's, maybe there is that, you know, thing that you feel that maybe everyone could do it, 
it, there but is just that there's something balance. there's some sort of ingredient that is needed for you to be that but you're, business you're, person that keeps you're going proving, you're proving the point that i'm trying to make so if someone had looked at you as an employee they would have said wow no because she's she's not she's not performing as she should because there was like there was that element lacking of you you were not passionate about what you're doing it wasn't your niche in life I, but I, once you found something that you you really were passionate about then you were able to then you know mm. bring in the mindset that you needed to bring in you, to have the motivation that you needed to to have so the key thing is finding that thing that the person is passionate about So if that person, I mean, if they're going to if they're going to set up a career at home and, and they're going to start a business, but they're going to start a business, you know, based on oh, I think um doilies sell, so I'm going to start selling do doilies, but they're not really passionate about that, then yeah, they may have setbacks, but I think once someone taps into that thing that they love doing, They can make a But it's not just him. that, though. You don't. It's not only. Sorry, Mel. It's not only. <laughs> it's, not all, it's not only that. Because I know people who they've got really good ideas and they want to run off with the idea and set up a business, but they just can't because they need. They don't really have that backbone that it takes to start a business and to sustain a business, or they'll start and can't. Keep going. Okay, so now we're having this argument and someone is sitting at home and thinking, do I have? So let's define for, for our viewers, what is it that they need to have in order for them to recognize that they can be mumpreneurs mom, or for them to switch off the idea completely? So the what, word, what's the key thing that they need to have? I think the word is made, mumpreneur is made up of two words, mum mom and entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You need to be a mother, a good mother, regardless of what's going on in your business, but you also need to be an be able to be an entrepreneur. And we all know the skills that are required for being an entrepreneur. So Which I think... Are? Resili oh, um, sorry, Shadia. I'll guess... Shadia yeah. mentioned a few of them before. Being able to be motivated, a self-starter. You need a backbone. You need to be resilient. Yeah, you need things. to... You, uh, as a mum, you are already a multitasker. Mm -hmm. So you need to bring that in three, four times over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you I, do. I, I think definitely for Shadia, I think she found something that was kind of, you know, like the sleeping lion. She yeah. didn't realise it was there. And it was, yeah. But I don't necessarily think that that might be in everybody. I think some women can, on, can only cope with just being mums and, and just hope that their husband is bringing in enough to just cover all the expenses. Mm -hmm. um, whilst I think that every mum, every person can find something that they're passionate about, Not everybody is able to sell to sell it and to, to sell themselves, and not every, yeah. everybody wants to. I mean, to, uh, to be I, I I do agree. There's a lot of uh, there's something that she said that um, strikes that that struck a nerve with me, and that was um, before before she came into an idea that idea. She had a, a a reflective period where she reflected on what was going on in her life, and she thought about you know what was going on, and 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 she decided no, I I, I want to go towards a different uh, direction. So I think. Obviously, it's, it's, you, you, people need to think well, they need mm. to reflect, they need to know themselves and know what they like very well. I think mm. that's key. Yeah. Mm. And I, okay, so I, I, I will allow you to convince me that not everybody will have that, 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 that drive, but they can get themselves to that point if yeah. they want yeah. to. But nobody I, may want to, not yeah, everybody true. may want yeah. to. True. I, I definitely think that there is no... Um, There is, we're not kind of sitting on the show saying, you know, not everyone has this ability, so don't even try. I definitely <laughs> think that if you have something that you want to do and that you're passionate about, you should definitely give it a try. There is yeah. no harm in, and I think sometimes people are afraid to try. Yeah. yeah. And there is no harm in trying because before I managed to um, set up this business, which is running well now, I did try a lot of other different things in terms of business and creativity. And I realized that's not for me or that's not working. That's just not going to work. And I, I just have not got the passion to carry this through. Um, so I agree with Shadi that passion is a really key thing. It's a key thing that you need. Um, but also you do need that resilience. You need the vision. If you have got a vision that you are convicted with, that is what's going to help you to also keep going. Mm. So I would say if you are a mum at home and you, you're, you know, you've got some sort of hidden passion in there that you want to explore more, why not? Mm -hmm. Go for it. You don't let anything stop you. And don't be afraid to make mistakes or don't be afraid to say, do you know what, I've started that and actually it's not for me. That's fine. There's mm -hmm. no harm done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've only kind of made yourself 
a, a more well-rounded person. You've, you've only eliminated what you don't want to do mm. and you're still on the quest to maybe finding what you do want to do. So mm. we hope that this show has inspired you. I've definitely been inspired today. Yeah. Um, and if you're a mumpreneur, then keep on doing what you're doing because you're definitely inspiring other women as well. Um, we would welcome your comments and your questions. And if you do have any comments on, or questions, um, feel free to email us at comments at dkw.me or at help at dkw.me. Join us next week for another fabulous show. And until then, it's goodbye. This program is brought to you by UCKG.